Most of you know what Prezi is. This is the kind of Prezi when Peter told me about his company and I went home and I, I opened up a Prezi and, and saw this. I mean, I intuitively knew, wow, this is what I, we were trying to get to at, at SGI, but could never get there. We could never get this mainstream with conveying information with visuals because we started with 3D. Well, the other thing that I, I, I thought was really exciting, even though we hadn't yet launched our iPad application, is not only could we do this in a presentation, a, a standalone presentation, but there was this thing called Prezi Meeting. And has, have anybody, has anyone here used Prezi Meeting? Okay. A few. I, for those of you that haven't, I, uh, and if you have um, remote clients or remote teams or remote collaborators, absolutely use this. It, we use it every day at Prezi because we're split between Budapest and San Francisco. So we're always on Prezi meeting collaborating. I was, I was really um, excited to hear that, that when I asked Anna what her favorite um, features were in Prezi, she said Prezi meeting because she co-collaborates on some of her graphic visualizations across time zones. I was like, yes, because that is the perfect use of, of Prezi meeting. So not only could we do standalone presentations in Prezi, but we could do it collaboratively. And then I came on right before we launched our iPad um, app, Prezi Viewer. And if you haven't used Prezi Viewer, it, I personally think, I probably shouldn't say this, I think it's the most elegant of our products. Um, because Prezi is meant to touch. I mean, the, the, the zooming, the panning, you just want to touch it. And you, you actually get to do that on Prezi Viewer. And it's really, really exciting. Zooming is important because our brains um, are wired to remember spatial relativity. Um, we learn from a very young age how to walk through a room because we understand how things are related to one another. Um, it's, a much, it's a much harder wiring than textual memory. So there's a, there's a, there was a TED talk this year by um, a guy named Neil Burgess, who is the director of Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience at the Uni University of Cambridge, no, it's University College in London. And he talks about how spatial memory is so, it's so critical to the way that we humans remember things. And that if you can create a visual journey that, that triggers that spatial memory, you're gonna get your audience to pay attention and you're gonna get them to remember. Even more important than pay attention, they're going to remember what you said because they're gonna visually remember it. And I think that's where one of the places that Prezi really shines. So quickly, as um, Hedwig said, I wanna tell you the Prezi story for those of you who haven't heard it. Um, so the company was founded by a visual artist and architect, Adam Shomlai Fisher. And basically, Adam was looking for a tool to help him present these, these, um, these visual installations that he was doing. He was getting some international renown, and so he, he needed to present on large stages. He couldn't find a tool, so he, he was a bit of a technologist, and he built this, um, this uh, thing that didn't yet have a name. And then he would travel the world and, and, and give a, a speech. And after the speech, someone would come up to him and inevitably and say, nice talk, but what was that thing you were using? And he, he would say, it's this tool that I developed and you can't really use it because you know I, I haven't built an editor for it. And then he ran in one, at one of these speeches um, was a guy named um, um, Peter Halachi. Uh, who was at the University of Budapest. And Peter was a professor in new media. And Peter came up afterwards, said the same thing, but he also added, we need to productize this. I will join you if you will let me help you build an editor. And he says, oh, okay, let's do it. Once they built that and started handing out to them their friends, it grew so quickly, they made a very fast decision to hire a third entrepreneur Peter Arvai, and Peter was a serial entrepreneur um, working in his own company in Sweden. He had grown up in Stockholm. And the funny story is that Peter contacted Peter Halachi and asked Peter Halachi to come join his company. 
And Peter Alachi said, Not, no, thank you, but I have an offer for you. Why don't you come and run our company, which is what happened. We launched in 2009 in, in April, May. Um, then we opened up our San Francisco office later that fall. I'll tell you why we did that in a moment. Um, we raised our first capital um, in 2009 as well. One of those investors was um, Ted. And that was, that's a great story in and of itself um, because we were the first company that Ted has ever invested in. In fact, they've only invested in a few companies since. And <laughs> the reason they invested in us was Peter had this great idea that our, our missions were the same and called up Chris, um, Chris Anderson and said, you have to see what this company's doing. Chris said, oh, yeah, okay, and put a meeting on his calendar and then canceled it. And then Peter said, you're not canceling the meeting. I've already scheduled my flight from Budapest to London. You're going to, I mean, to New York, you're going to meet with me. And so in the first 15 minutes, um, Chris decided to invest in, in Prezi. And again, it was the first um, company Ted had ever invested in. The other investor, um, Sunstone Capital, um, a Danish investor, convinced the guys th that Prezi was growing so fast that it had the opportunity to tackle PowerPoint. And the only way that to do that was to incorporate in the US and open up an office in Silicon Valley. Because if you're going to tackle the, the beast, you need to be in the location of the beast. Um, now we have over 70 employees in Budapest, over 10 in San Francisco. I'm representing over 14 countries. We're growing incredibly fast. Um, one of the beautiful things about the business model from the very beginning is we've been cash flow positive, um, which is having run a startup and been in a few, that's astounding. <laughs> um, and w like I said, we've been growing like gangbusters. We're more than 11 million users now. Actually, as of today, we're almost 12 million. But what we do know is who visits um, the website since the, the, since the inception of Prezi. And the Netherlands is six, the sixth highest country visiting Prezi.com. And it's the third highest of paid licenses or, or, or licenses that have been purchased through Prezi.com, um, which is astounding. So it's the US, um, the UK, and the Netherlands. We are releasing very soon the ability to reveal. And people, this is especially requested in business and especially from people that come from PowerPoint because they really miss this feature so much. Now, how can this background image be more spatial? Sort of. I'll give you a hint. You, you'll probably guess first. Ties very much into my background. Yeah, so we are allowing limited use of 3D. I think what's great about the way that Prezi has approached this is, as I said before, 3D editing is a nightmare, but creating an a image which can be a canvas to navigate 3D, it doesn't change how you use Prezi, you just put an image in the back and then you navigate through it so you don't have to become a 3D editor. You just need to know how to import an image. Um, so with that, I think I'll open it up for questions, and I'll answer those that I can, and will gracefully decline those that I can't. <laughs>